But who chooses how you're going to react? You do. You do. We all agree with that, but how many of us want to blame someone else and say, you made me angry, you hurt my feelings. And we feel we have the right to resent them, don't we? And yet, who's making the choice to feel that way? We put together information and we assume, oh, I know what you meant. Is that true or is that an assumption? You can think you know what someone means, but there's only one way to know what their intent is. What would you have to do? You would have to ask. It's the number one thing human beings will not do. We will assume, based on all the stimuli and information coming into us, oh, I know what that means. Oh, I know what you meant. My brother had called me today, and we had, you know, if you have a good relationship with people, generally how will they take your messages, even if it could be a little critical? How will they usually take your messages if you oh, really like them? Meant that you meant something else. Yeah, you must have been wrong, and it must not have been what you meant, because that would have been mean or hurtful if you would have said that. So we wouldn't make that assumption. But what if you don't have a good relationship with somebody? You're probably going to take it in the worst way possible. So I asked my brother to cancel his auto insurance because his car is dead. So I thought, why, if, why should my movie really pay for his car insurance if it's dead? So he's not going to fix it, so let's just get rid of that. So he called me and asked, he said, would you have the phone number for the insurance agency? Why would I have the phone number? It's his, his account, her account. Can, you should have it. But I said, oh, I looked it up online. So I sent it to him. And I said, well, here's the phone number for the company. I don't have your account number, though. Then he sent me back several lines. I did not ask you for my account number. I don't know where you assume. And he took it in the worst way possible, which was not my intent. Although, did I now want to respond in a negative way? <laughs> now, is this going to make things better, or is it going to make it worse? Now, intelligence would be, no, that was not my intent. You took it the wrong way. As human beings, the one thing you can do to somebody that is not going to go well for you, the one habit I will ask you to break right now, of several habits, is do not think the worst of a situation, even if it seems obvious it could be. If someone seems to be wanting to hurt your feelings, let's say, what would be something you could do instead of assume they're hurting you, they need to hurt your feelings? You can clarify by doing what? You know, it seems that when you said this, it came across as hurtful for me, but I don't know if that was your intent. Could you tell me more about that? Now, is that easy to do if your emotions are high? Yes. Exactly. Because if their intent was to hurt your feelings, was to make you angry, although they don't have that control. You can stay calm and collected and actually not play into this because even though they can try to push your buttons, do you have to react? That's hard to do, and I'm going to teach you a method on how not to do it, but you've got to be able to learn the skill of emotional intelligence, which is if you can keep your emotions under control, you can assess a situation more clearly and come up with the right way to say things, the right, right way to approach something to get the results you want. How many of you would say that life would work a lot better if we got more of the results we wanted from other people? And what gets in the way the most? Yeah. Assumptions and emotions. Anger, hurt feelings, resentments, especially from the people who are closest to you because they mean more to you. Anybody have a problem over the holidays with people pushing your buttons and it was just hard to just let it go and not try to push theirs back? And yet if you push theirs back, what happens when you push someone's buttons? It's just going to escalate. So when your emotions are high, the first thing you need to do is you've got to get those emotions down. But so the number one thing you should do if you notice that someone pushes your buttons in a negative way, and of course if someone says nice, something nice to you, you can just take the compliment and that's a good thing. But what if it pushes your buttons and suddenly you're up here? You're angry, fearful, hurt. What do you do? First thing you've got to do, number one, is you've got to stop and bring it down. And once you bring it down, the second thing you want to do is do what? Clarify. Clarify the situation. Before you decide, what would be the best way to handle this? I was listening to some people talk a little earlier about the game of chess. Does this sound a little bit like chess? When someone makes a move and you're worried because now suddenly they say, check. Are there some emotions going on? Do 
you have to be careful what move you're going to make next. If you made a move out of a high state of emotions, is that a wise move? So what do you think the first thing you should do? I'm going to teach you a simple method that you all learned way back in grammar school probably, that when, you're, when you find yourself on fire, what's the first thing that you should do? Run! <laughs> you know that's not going to go well. It's not going to get you the results you want. What results do you want? You want the fire out now. So what do you do? Stop, stop, stop drop, and roll. We all know to do that. The same thing you can do when your emotions get high, when someone pushes your buttons, is don't react at that moment. Notice, whoa, my buttons are high. Can you act clearly right now? You must stop and drop out of the situation. You must somehow get yourself away from that person. What are some ways you could get yourself out of that situation? Distract someone. Distract someone? Yeah, that's a good thing. What's another one? Excuse me a moment. Could you excuse me for a moment? You could put someone on hold, you could walk away. But your emotions are high. So how do you get your emotions down? Just like with stress, it's the same thing. When stress builds up in the body, you've got to get it out. Physically, what could you do? Deep breathe. Take a breath. You can deep breathe, you can take a walk, you can do it. Deep breaths. So the number one thing I would suggest is take some deep breaths. Now you've all heard that, but a lot of people don't know how to take deep breaths. And when you're in a state of high stress, it is hard to get a sense of what is a deep breath. Because when stress levels are high, do you breathe more deeply or more shallow? It's more shallow. And the lungs have two lobes. There's an upper lobe and a lower lobe of the lungs. So you're you familiar with this? Some, some of you may have heard this before. And the upper lobes hold 40% of the air. The third lobe, the, the lower lobes hold 60%. Where's the best place to be breathing if you want to choose? You want as much oxygen in your body to calm the body and soothe the body from that fight or flight syndrome we have when our buttons get pushed. Suddenly, the fight or flight syndrome, all the blood is drawn more to the center of the body. The heart is pumping faster. The blood pressure is going higher. Uh, do you have a greater need for oxygen? Yes. So the best way to begin to calm the body is you must take in more oxygen than you would normally. So you must breathe deeply. Everybody sit up straight in your chair for just a minute. If you were to put one hand up here and one hand down here, I'll give you a sense of what it feels to breathe diaphragmatically. Using the diaphragm, that muscle that, is, that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity here, and it kind of sits up, and when it flattens out, it brings air, draws air into the lungs. And so you want to draw air down here first into the lower lungs before you try to breathe up here. If you breathe only up here, you can't bring much air into the lower lungs. Once you've taken an upper lung breath, you can really bring no more air in. So you must start here and then finish here. So when you breathe, we'll just breathe first of all, just, let's just breathe just up here for a moment. So put your hand right here and one here, and I only want you to breathe deeply, but only with the upper lobes of the lungs, so this hand will not move. So breathe in such a way where you feel, look, and it should look a little like this. Notice this isn't moving much. Now the lower lobes are a little more embarrassing to people, but it looks something like this. So if you take a full breath down there, the stomach can do nothing but come out, but I don't want the upper chest to come up. So when you practice this, you must.